Well, hi, and uh, welcome to my garage, the only place I can come to test these radios without a huge amount of radio noise interfering with the test. So here you see the two radios I just finished, both in their cabinets. So they're both switched on. We're going to turn the volume up on the one on the right there. We'll have a listen, and then we'll listen to the one on the left. Sorry, this is going to be a clumsy uh, video because I'm going to have to hold my phone here to, to do this. So let me just turn that up a bit. U.S. price is up one and a third percent at almost seventy dollars per barrel. So this uh, price decline could be somewhat short-lived. We'll track this as uh, Saudi Arabia is actually rippling and Boston defense. And I also also think it's worth noting that Republicans have, from the beginning, really made an effort to paint Brett Kavanaugh as a Yes, that's American news on Canadian television. We're, we're swamped by the United States. And uh, now let's try this radio. That was both 680 and then 640. So. 680. Thank you so much for having me. Our pleasure. That again, Emma Gray, author of A Girl's Guide to Joining the Resistance, as well as a senior reporter at HuffPost. On the other side of things, we're going to catch up with Dr. Brett Belchett, our medical expert. There we are. Now you can still hear the radio interference coming through even the strong signals that these radios are picking up. The, the interference in my house is so high, and I've tried and tried to find the source, but I can't, so... Here we are out in the garage. So there you are, anyway, the uh, Crosley 12B slash C radios, both uh, performing fairly well. And if you just look while I'm out here, here's what's coming next. These two radios are out of their cabinets. This one here is having its cabinet done. Here it is right here. I'm working on it right now. But I think another radio is going to be in my shop before this guy gets in there. So thanks so much for watching this short, quick video. I wish it was better. I have one more radio uh, to show you. Um, I've got to bring it out here to, to show it off. That's what I'm going to have to do. Darn it. Okay. Okay. And now for a look at the Stromberg Carlson radio I was working on. This is a $20 radio that came to me in horrible looking condition. Uh, it's certainly not so horrible anymore. Now this was not a monumental amount of effort for me to, uh, to fix this up. I had to work hard on the top here because it's only because of my lack of experience with it. But uh, it turns out the cabinet is fantastic looking. So let's switch it on here. sec you can see the magic eye has come on yikes Now this, this radio, this radio comes with this special base uh, uh, transmission line system for the back of the speaker. I haven't installed it yet, so I'm going to do that in a moment. I just want to listen to it here a little more. I get a notion of the base level. Now this is really hard to do on an iPhone, I'm afraid, but... And, you know, with a guy's voice. That's not the best either. Okay, so what I've done is I brought out my uh, loop antenna here, tuned loop antenna. It's tuned to around uh, 
700 kilohertz, 600, 700 kilohertz, bottom of the A and band, roughly. It's connected to this radio. Now, this radio has no internal antenna at all, so it just has terminals. You have to hook it up to something. I had it hooked up to an outdoor wire antenna, and you heard uh, the result. Here's the result with the loop antenna. To no interest for 90 days when you purchase a set of tires with your Scotiabank GM Visa card. Not a car holder? At any supply service dealership. If you need tires for any car, truck, or SUV, there is only one place to go. Offer ends October 15th. Visit mycertifiedservice.ca for details. I'm Johnny Harris, and I'm back for a new season of Still Standing. By the end of the ride, I gotta say my potatoes were mashed. Okay, now I'm gonna fit in the special uh, transmission line speaker in the back and uh, and we'll listen to it again see if it sounds any different not a very good test but best I can do I'm afraid okay so I fitted in the uh, transmission line box right down there the port on the box is faces right down towards the floor okay now will we hear any difference <laughs> University professor Paul Delaney. Paul, good morning. Good morning, good morning. You did great. <laughs> <laughs> so now let's talk about what this actually means because, you know, if you're watching sci fi, if you're watching, you know, tunes. Uh... You know we can. You're up against a deadline. Now you need to go out and buy another ink cartridge. If you're tired of changing ink cartridges, why not change your printer? Canon Megatank refillable printers come with ink equal to 30 conventional ink cartridge sets. Let that settle in. Now, that's that radio on its loop antenna. Now, here is this radio with its built-in antenna. Magnetic radiation, light, your radio signals, gamma rays, and so on. Oh. So, unlike the black hole, as you indicated, we have the opportunity to compare the propagation speeds of the gravitational wave as it ripples through space time with the speed of light, the electromagnetic carrier signal that comes across the universe. Uh, and a lot of our theories, no, not a lot, but some of our theories that talk about gravity, and there's still a lot of discussion about how gravity is actually working. Some of those theories suggest that there are more dimensions that uh, exist other than the four that you and I are used to, and that gravitational waves, a theory of gravity, if you will, utilizes some extra dimensional uh, activity, shall I say. So you punch energy into these other dimensions. As a consequence of that, you could see a difference in the propagation speed, how quickly the disturbance in gravity and the disturbance in uh, light, how rapidly they are moving. The merger of the neutron stars allowed, as you said, the comparison of those propagation speeds. And at this point in time, for the measurement accuracy we have, they travel at the same speed, very strongly suggesting that Gravity, gravitational wave, and electromagnetic uh, waves. There's some noise. Through the same number of space time dimensions, in this case, four. So it's the first time we've actually been able to make a measurement to try and determine the existence, if you will, of these other dimensions. And at the moment, there's no evidence to support more than the four dimensions that we see. Now, Paul, the next obvious question is simply because we don't have direct evidence of those, you know, higher dimensions that have been predicted by other theories of gravity, does that definitively rule them out? It does not, no. Uh, but in science, you, you, you create the theories, which we have, and then you go and search for uh, experimental means to verify the theory. And so, at the moment, we've got no direct evidence that suggests that they are there. Uh, and this is the first, you know, very, very concrete experiment that we've been able to uh, utilize that says, okay, if, if they are there, they are not disturbing, uh, you know, the speed with which gravitational waves are moving. And so that puts an added constraint on what these other dimensions, how they would interact with, you know, the four space-time dimensions that we have. So you're right, we, we, we can't rule them out but we can now further constrain their properties. And in science, that's a really big step forward to be able to say, they can't do this, therefore, here are the properties that they have to abide by. 
So how, what does this, how does this relate to the whole notion of dark matter and dark energy? Because one of the ways that, uh, at least I've read about this article mentions it as well, is that one of the ways that they've been explained is you kind of tinker with the way gravity would work at these huge distances, and part of that is adding some of those extra dimensions in, into, the, into the mix. That's correct. For the last 30 to 40 years, we've been focused on dark matter and dark energy, two uh, energy matter um, uh, ideas uh, that really take up nearly 95, 96% of the matter energy balance in our universe. So when you and I sort of meet each other, you know, we're baryonic particles, we only make up less than 4% of the total mass energy balance in our universe. So we don't know very much about a universe. When you look at dark matter, for example, uh, you know, it's got a gravitational signature and therefore we're being forced to look very carefully at our traditional theories of gravity to try and account for the properties that dark matter and the rest of the universe engender. Uh, and, and while most uh, astrophysicists, cosmologists, are comfortable with the way Newton and now Einstein talk about gravity, there are still other theories out there which could account for the basic properties of, of gravity in the universe. And this are as far as dark energy is concerned. So, you know, we look for constraints, observational constraints, to better refine the theory. Uh, and sometimes they refute existing theories, other times they put the, the contenders, if you will, out the window. And so we're in that era at the moment of looking at all of both the traditional theories that talk about dark matter and dark energy, as well as the more exotic theories, and we're trying to better understand how to do experiments that say, yeah, this one works, no, that one doesn't. And this uh, experiment, if you will, from the colliding neutron star, is just another tool that we're able to utilize to help us better understand you know, what's going on. And it's not the only experiments that are out there. You know, there's uh, a, a wonderful trinary star system, which is a, a, a group of neutron stars and white dwarfs, and we're accurately measuring their dance in space as well to give us more constraints on, if you will, the theories of relativity. And speaking of relatively, relativity rather, you know, that was Einstein's uh, theory, one of his most famous ones. How does that all relate back to this? Is, do we talk it up as a win for Einstein? Um, I, I think that would be a reasonable statement. It certainly hasn't been a lot. Uh, Okay, well, wow, that's interesting. Always interesting to hear scientists being interviewed by lay people, and lay people asking loaded questions without realizing it. So, uh, very interesting. That's why I let that play. I'm really interested in that uh, whole discussion around all that stuff, gravity waves and everything else that's going on in this universe. So there we are. Um, there's the. Uh, so this radio goes home tomorrow. This radio is home already and this radio well it's home here now but maybe it's looking for a new home I don't know what should I do with it it just looks great uh, wow $20 literally this looked like a piece of junk at a yard sale and frankly it's not hard to bring these back up to looking like this I'm really excited about that so fantastic okay so there's a little something about this radio I forgot to check out which we're gonna check out now and it's all about that bass, extra bass speaker and this control here on the radio, which is a bass control. So it has a tone control and a bass control. It's very unusual. The tone control is just a treble cut, like on so many of these radios. But this is more like a bass boost, I think. So now I'm just doing this with my iPhone, so mm, I don't know how well this is gonna work, but we're gonna try this control and see if you can hear the bass go up and down. I can certainly hear it with my ear. So we're going to switch it on. Now, something else I've noticed about this radio, and I'm afraid I've noticed it too many times to ignore it, the magic eye comes on really bright at the start. Watch. Just let it warm up. Keep your eye on the eye. Keep your eye on the eye. There it goes. Bright. And then dull. So a little more to do in this radio. <laughs> For the government to kind of continue with Bill 31 and now, the notwithstanding clause in case of further appeal. We're going to try this with a person's voice. Uh, I mean, we'll see what you can hear. already moving on two tracks here. Does it make sense for them to continue on two tracks? That's minimum. Well, you might, you know, you actually might want to continue with the notwithstanding clause just until the appeal is heard. Oh, that's a woman's voice. If you, if you uh, win the appeal, I can hear it with my ears, but it's. Clause, but if you lose the appeal, 
then you would want the notwithstanding clause uh, still in place. Yeah, we have a uh, government which has created a mini constitutional crisis in Canada by using something called a notwithstanding clause in our constitution, which allows the government to wipe aside any jurisprudence that has uh, been uh, implemented in whatever decision it is they're making. So in other words, they can ignore the Canadian courts and just press ahead with whatever they want. Or another way of putting it is, Governments in Canada have the power through the Constitution to turn off our rights anytime they like and ram through regis legislation. No government has really done that until now. And it's, I won't go into it, but it's not even important legislation. So this has caused a big hubba hubba in Canada. ...of some higher authority or, or higher capability. I mean, Ontario came out and said, we're going to shrink the size of city council and Toronto and a bunch of people said, we'll see you in court. The court came up with a ruling. The Ontario government invoked the notwithstanding clause. What would be the next stage of this here? I mean, at what point are we actually going to start running out of options here so that some side or the other has to kind of acknowledge that they've lost, that they've run out the runway on legal appeals? I get the feeling we're probably not there yet, not even on this track. Right, so if the notwithstanding clause stays invoked, then the city has said that, one, they're going to ask Parliament to a little bit more difficult, a little bit more muddled with guys getting new contracts. But I've always been big on Josh Devo, and I love the fact that he said, you know, I could play the UFA game, but I, I really want, I want a chance here. And uh, and, I, and I think a few times I've seen him, he's, he's embraced it. Any concern on your part at all about William Nylander's status right now? Or, um, I mean, you made the point last week, and, and I touched on it in my column this week, which I thought makes perfect sense, where, you know, people are, are worrying about... William Le Nylander and what type of uh, an effect this may have on Mike Babcock. I mean, once this deal's done, you're, you're not going to penalize William Nylander for four or five. Fantastic. So that bass, the bass control does what it's supposed to do. It does bring out that booming low bass that everybody loves in these old radios. Whether the transmission line is responsible for that, the, the uh, special speaker arrangement, I don't know. But in any case, it sounds great. Put a good antenna on it, it sounds fantastic. And uh, this antenna, uh, the loop antennas, uh, you know, they're tuned devices. So they tend to reject a lot of unwanted stuff. And that's what's going on in my location here. Piles of unwanted interference upsetting all my radios. But uh, there we go. And uh, you learned a little more about what's going on in Canada. Yeah, you know what? There's more than one go government in the world, not just America. You know, there's other governments with stuff going on. <laughs> See you on the next video. Bye.